Do you own a pot? In this video, we will look at methods of adjusting numeric plot axes in MATLAB. This is useful for highlighting specific sections of data or for improving the overall appearance. The methods discussed include changing the axis limits and also utilizing logarithmic scale axes. This slide demonstrates uses of the xlim and ylim functions. As their names imply, they allow us to adjust the limits for the x and y axes. First, we create a starting plot. This one shows the equation y equals x squared minus 4x for x values from negative 7 to positive 13. MATLAB will automatically choose axes limits that go slightly beyond the domain and range. Notice how the x-axis starts at negative 10 and extends to positive 15. The first modification is to the y-axis using the ylim function. The only input argument is a two-element vector with the first number indicating the lower limit and the second number indicating the upper limit. Notice that the y-axis now goes from below 0 to above 80. Then we modify the x-axis using xlim. Now the x-axis starts at 0 and stops at positive 8. All of the plots are of the exact same data. They just appear differently due to different axis limits. Now let's look at the axis function. There are a variety of syntaxes, four of which are shown here. The most common use is to define all four of the axis limits, x min, x max, y min, and y max. This does in one command what xlim and ylim did in two separate commands. We could also use axis for some automatic scaling. Axis equal sets the x and y axes at the same limits. Axis square makes the axis box, or the figure, a square. Perhaps you don't want to see the axis at all. In that case, use axis off. Here's an example of setting the full axis limits in one command. First, we create the original plot with the three commands shown here. Then, we pass in a four-element vector into the axis function. Now, we can see the x-axis goes from 0 to 8, and the y-axis from negative 5 to 82. Here's an example of using axis off. As you can see, the data, or the blue line, is still shown, but the axis numbers and the white box are gone. Most of us have been using linear axes all of our lives, but sometimes there is need for logarithmic axes. With a linear axis, all the tick marks are spaced by adding a consistent amount between each of them. With a logarithmic axis, all the tick marks are spaced by multiplying a consistent amount between each of them. A popular example of a logarithmic scale is the Richter scale for measuring earthquakes, which uses a base 10 logarithm. This means that a magnitude 7 earthquake has vibration amplitudes 10 times larger than a magnitude 6 earthquake. Two common reasons to use a logarithmic scale for one or both axes are 1. To model a known exponential relationship or 2. When data extends across a dramatically large range spanning multiple orders of magnitude. In this example using a linear scale y-axis the data is growing exponentially throughout the plot, but most of the data just looks like a flat line at zero. The huge later data makes it impossible to see changes in the earlier data. So a better approach would be to use a log scale y-axis. The data in these two figures is the same, but on the right we are able to see the changes in the earlier data. Notice the scale on this y-axis. Each tick mark is 100 times the value of the previous tick mark. To create this type of plot, with only the y-axis on a logarithmic scale, we use a function called semilog y. This slide summarizes the four options of functions related to the axis scale. The usual plot function uses both linear axes. Semilog x or semilog y makes one specific axis logarithmic. And finally, log log makes both x and y axes logarithmic.